as I reflect back on the journey of my life, I think about how God directed me to Kampala for that workshop. I had a burden for my church to give from their hearts and not out of duty. But I never thought it would take such a horrible situation for me and my town to realize that we all needed to change. In 2001, the ADF army overtook many regions of Western Uganda, forcing over 80,000 survivors into the turmoil and destitution of refugee camps. As the war raged on, hope along with the moral fiber of the people faded. But there was one who chose to inspire through generosity and gracious giving, and this is his story. My name is Hannington Bahemuka but most people call me Bishop Huntington. The life in the camps was very bad because families would crowd in the shack houses, children would go without food for one, two, three days, water was not available, and death started resulting within a short time. <laughs> How can I, Lord? How can I help them out of this situation? While everything around him was disintegrating, war could not destroy Hennington's commitment to effective stewardship. The Lord spoke to my heart about putting into practice what I had learned at the International Steward Workshop. I had been taught that everything we have belongs to God. So even in this refugee camp, God has put abundant resources for his work. So I called upon the believers to start sharing what they have with the needy. In the camps, we started a campaign to provide blankets to the orphans, and it was the first time we saw the principles come to life. After two miserable years in captivity, it was safe to return home to Bundibujo, only to find that all had been destroyed. The houses had been torn down, the farms had nothing in them, churches had been demolished, schools were devastated, so we started from a scratch. The need seemed too great, leaving the people asking the all too common question, how can the people from the West help us? However, Huntington inspired his people to ask a different question. I ask, how soon can my people rise to the challenge of funding, not only their immediate needs, but their futures as well? I told the people at that time that God has given us everything we need to rebuild our community. And what he needed was others to make themselves available to him, and he was going to use us. And those of us who are mechanics, those of us who are business people, they can use their gifts and the trade that they have to build their community. Taught us about giving, and through that, the pastors went around teaching. So, through that, the message was spread. One by one, person by person, the idea caught on, and before they knew it, the town was being transformed. We began to rebuild our churches, provided homes and schooling for the orphans, and the needs of the people were met. The people understood that they needed to create wealth in order to allow for tangible generosity. By using their God-given gifts and the resources they already possessed, a cycle of sustainability was established. We have a lady in our church. She is lame, but one day we were calling upon people to bring their gifts to come and build a church. And today, the church she worships in uh, is made of bricks. 
and we look at that as a wonderful example of gracious giving. And this message can work in every situation, in every country, because surely generosity is transformational. Out of the jungle of war and destruction, one pioneer leader, inspired by generosity, shared the vision with his community. No longer waiting for outside relief, the grace of giving has replaced a welfare mentality, and an entire town was rebuilt. <laughs>